Tonight's top EU stories from the UNIT website include We can't be told our own views on the EU. Official EU audit warns of massive burden for Britain. EU-US trade, a tale of two farms. Broke, Italy would love to, but can't pay its bills this year. Plus, Italian Mafia turns to wind farm investment to launder money and benefit from EU subsidies. I'm Rick Timmis and this is the Unit Nightly News. First, from our homepage. What are Eurocrats allowed to know about what we Brits think about the EU? which is not being reported in Britain? The answer is the findings of a new poll carried out by the Eurosceptic Bruges Group, which, for the first time ever, put to voters the crucial question that our politicians seem to determine to keep buried from view. How would we vote if we were given a clear choice between remaining in the EU or leaving it to join the European Free Trade Area, which would still give us full access to the single market? Only 29% want to stay in the EU, well over twice as many, 71%, think we should leave by invoking Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty and joining EFTA. If ever we are to have a grown-up discussion about Britain's relationship with Europe, this is the choice that should be at the centre of the debate. It is the only question that makes practical sense, but our politicians seem so terrified of it being raised that it scarcely ever gets mentioned. But why are they afraid of providing true representation of the electorate? Surely that is their prime directive. What possible incentive could lead away from the calling to act in the best interests of their constituents? Complying with European Union regulations is costing Britain billions of pounds a year. The first official audit of the costs of membership is to disclose. The burden on British business will be laid bare in a series of reports which will be published tomorrow by William Haig, the Foreign Secretary. The audit is made up of six reports called Balances of Competences, which civil servants have spent months preparing. Senior Conservatives hope the reports form the bedrock of a renegotiation with Brussels if David Cameron wins the 2015 general election. This article looks at the evidence published alongside the reports. A ferocious noon sun beats down on Richard Wilkins as he traverses long rows of corn at his farm in Greenwood, Delaware, USA. The tall, healthy stalks bow slightly to the gentle breeze that does little to ease the heat. He's expecting a relatively good corn yield this year. He first started farming more than 40 years ago. He began planting genetically modified crops, corn, soya beans, alfalfa, in the mid-1990s. Since then, Wilkins has become a true believer. He calls them genetically enhanced crops. This is an advancement in science that's good for mankind. It's good for the planet, he says. It's something that myself as a farmer, ecologist, environmentalist, I've embraced it as a being a better way for us to grow our food. Genetically modified crops will be one of the many thorny issues taken up when the US and European Union sit down to negotiate the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or TTIP, in Washington this week. The ambitious free trade deal could form the world's largest single market. It promises to create thousands of new jobs and generate tens of billions of dollars in additional trade. But let me ask a question about the wisdom of genetically modified crops. Take a corn plant modified to be resistant to the herbicide Roundup, let's say. Now this enables the farmer to increase the spraying of Roundup in the field, in the knowledge that the corn plant won't be harmed. But what happens to the other plants being regularly doused with Roundup? Well, over time they develop the same resistance, except they do it via natural selection. So now we have many plant species that have genetic changes, some evolutionary and some modified in vitro. This leads to complete ecological change. And furthermore, it's changes that we cannot even model. But the most challenging piece of critical thinking is when asking the question about reversal. Once they are beyond the lab and grown in the field where there is no way to return them nor reverse their effects on the ecology. <laughs> 
In most countries, it would be an act of mind-bending chuspa, or perhaps a display of political insanity. But in Italy, it barely made ripples. For a government official, a minister no less, to declare that the country cannot pay its long overdue bills. And not for a month or two, but for the rest of this year, due to technical problems. The Italian government is out of money. Not that the US government is any, in any better shape in that respect, or the Japanese government for that matter. But they have central banks that print the missing moolah with lavish abandon. Italy doesn't. It has the ECB, which is run by an Italian who promised last year to print with lavish abandon to keep countries like Italy afloat. But that promise is not the same thing as having your own central bank. Well, here it comes, folks. The early warning signals just before the summer recess. In fact, Trevor Coleman and I should have a wager as to which country goes down the toilet first. He feels it's Italy, as attested by this article. Me? Well, I'm sticking with my prediction for Ireland. Watch this space. The Mafia is ramping up investment in wind farms to launder criminal earnings and benefit from generous EU subsidies, a report by Europe's policing agency has warned. Attracted by generous EU and state handouts and coupled with lax controls, the Europol analysis found that Italian gangsters are increasingly seeing renewable energy as easy pickings. The Italian mafia is investing more and more in renewable energy, especially in wind farms, to profit from generous European grants paid by member states, which allowed them to mix dirty money with legitimate economic activities, the report said. The scam works on multiple levels, using the age-old formula of intimidation of landowners and infiltration of regional agencies that hand out subsidies and award contracts, observers believe. Today in our video library, Jim Rickards considers the current state of world economies and the dollar. In this interview, the prognosis is not good, with Rickards forecasting a global currency collapse. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for the unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon. You can get lots more news stories and information on our website, theunit.com. You can get in touch with us there, and we particularly welcome your letters and points of view. You can follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter username is the E Unit. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel for all of our regular updates. You can join me and the rest of the team for interactive discussion and debate on Google Plus at any time. Are you looking for a public speaker for your event? Our public speakers are happy to come and discuss Britain's relationship with the EU in your area at no cost. If you would like to add interest and value to your group event, then get in touch with us via the Word section of our website. Join us in our live Question Time style online show, The Unit Interactive, broadcast live on our website, theunit.com, and globally via thehangoutshow.com. Join our community on Google+, and you can be part of the wider public voice, united in freedom, liberty, and independence. Simply join our community, the unit on Google+, links to the community page are below. <laughs>